Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch History Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for a presentation of this uh, build project here. Uh, this is uh, obviously an unfinished quadcopter I have here. This is the Racer X FPV ET5 frame. It's an ultralight 5 inch quadcopter. And in this video, I'm again gonna present you with, <laughs> with this project. So these videos, I always do a video like this for any uh, build project, and they kind of serve two purposes. One as a reference, if I wanna tell people about the quadcopter I'm flying, I can simply reference this video to let them uh, know what components I've used, but also why I've used those components. Second purpose is, if you wanna build along, well, here are, are the components I'll be using for this build, and again, why? So let's get into it, here we go. So guys, most of these builds will start with an idea, a concept, a special kind of purpose you want to build a quadcopter for. And that's the case uh, here. I wanted to build me a 5 inch ultralight quadcopter, and I've also come across uh, a lot of Gorgeous looking quadcopters from Racer FPV on their uh, Facebook page. I've been wanting to build one uh, for about a year. Finally, I have me this frame. And so this is a five inch quadcopter, but super duper light. It is a one piece frame. Also, I've done a review of this frame already, and I'll link to that uh, up there somewhere. <laughs> In the upper right corner will be a, a review of this frame if you wanna know more details. You can order these frames with different colors of canopies. You can also order decals for the frame to color the entire frame, if you will. So my frame is uh, plain black carbon fiber, but as you see, I have a, an orange blue canopy, which go together well with these motors, these Korea Ria motors, which are also orange and blue. Speaking of, so Korea Ria motors, and these are 1507 in size and 3100 kV. That's a pretty high kV for a 5 inch, and yes, this will be a 4S quadcopter. Uh, we'll see how that works out. It'll be a very, very high kV for 4S, I know. <laughs> Again, we'll see how that works out. And does the... Okay, there are no specs on the box itself. Again, 1507, these are basically 3-inch quad uh, quadcopter motors. In fact, uh, Korea Ria tells me that uh, they are designed for 3-inch quadcopters and they probably work very well on a typical 3-inch. This is actually pretty normal. If you are unfamiliar with these kinds of builds, we generally use, at least at this point in time, 3-inch components for our ultralight 4-inch and 5-inch quadcopters, which is, well, what I'm doing here. And two reasons for choosing these motors. First of all, I built me this quadcopter at the start of this uh, year, actually. Yeah, this was my first build of 2020, and also Korea Ria motors, and they've held up very, very well. Um, I've, um, I'm, I'm not sure how many flights I have on this quadcopter, a lot. Really, a lot. And a lot of crashes as well. This is probably my fifth set of propellers with it. And um, yeah, the canopy uh, TPU, right, can take a beating. Uh, everything still works well. I've uh, had to rinse these motors a couple of times uh, from uh, sand being in them. Again, they still feel the same, very notchy actually. Is that typical for Toa motors or Korea Ria motors? I don't know. This is my second set of Korea Ria motors. And again, these are very notchy. What does that mean? That means nothing. <laughs> to me, it means nothing. Again, these motors perform well. And we will see whether these perform well as well. Uh, they at least look nice. That's a good start. And they actually look gorgeous. Yeah, these are Unibel motors, 
gorgeous. So the entire bell, the outside of the motor that you actually see is one piece and that's more expensive to produce. It also looks nice. Is there a performance benefit to that? Mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe reliability or crash resistance. Maybe. Could be. However, uh, the, the first thing uh, for me was that these work well and they look nice. So uh, for the rest of it, we'll see how they perform. I have high hopes for them. Okay, because these motors have such a high KV, I kind of bought me some insurance <laughs> by going with a Mamba Diatone flight controller and ESC board. Ordinarily, I might have gone with a Abita FPV 20 amp. But with these motors being such high KV, and this is a new flight controller from uh, Diatone, so I wanted to check it out. In fact, I've already done an overview of this all-in-one board. So this is a 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller. And I have a video uh, link up there in the upper right corner to this board from, again, uh, Diatone slash uh, Mamba. Yeah, um, Mamba slash Diatone Electronics uh, have uh, served me well, so I have uh, high hopes for this uh, flight controller slash uh, 4M1 ESC as well. Also the ratings of this one are a little higher than the Beta FPV one I might have otherwise used. 25 amp, so 4 times 25 amp. I don't expect to run anywhere close to 100 amps, but we'll see. We'll see, right? This is also pretty typical if you are unfamiliar with these kinds of builds to use a, a whoop style of board, a 4-in-1. So not a stack, not a 4-in-1 ESC and then a flight controller on top of it. This is again pretty typical, even though this frame, this ET frame frame does accept 20 by 20 sticks. So that would have been an option, but uh, yeah, this the added benefit of this 4-in-1 ESC is that there is a flight one target for it and I want to try that. So in this project we will be trying a flight one uh, firmware as well. The FV setup for this quadcopter will be a Runcam Phoenix version 2. And originally I had actually planned to use a nano camera for this build. But there is still a benefit to using a slightly bigger camera because these lenses are better. This uh, canopy uh, can uh, easily house a micro camera such as this one. So there's no real reason to not use a micro camera. Nano camera would have uh, worked obviously, but again, better lens. So And, and I also have this camera works right blue will also work with this build obviously okay so and the vtx is brand new i will be yeah i should be doing a video on this vtx it's interesting in my humble opinion it's a three-piece product actually as you can see from beta fpv this is the actual VTX and this is their M02, brand new, again, VTX, runs up to 350 milliwatts, very small, and it comes with this uh, mounting bracket, which you can solder it into, and pretty convenient, and it also comes with this, this uh, lovely antenna, blue, works together well with this build, right? But uh, yeah, I'll be doing a review of this uh, one. I haven't done uh, yet, but I should be doing a review of this VTX. Nice and small, and it's a nice package, I think, with this brace or this mount and the antenna. Very, very nice. Couple of things to finish the build. Jam fan propellers, hurricanes, and these are the 5125 propellers. So the pitch is pretty low. And yes, they, they are three blade to add insult to injury. Already a high KV and then three blades. Okay, I hope to be getting away with that, that setup. Again, the pitch is pretty low. So that should compensate for the high KV somewhat at least. And I obviously need me a receiver and this is uh, pretty typical. This is an uh, Eversky XM Plus receiver, which will uh, work fine, uh, I guess. So what else? I think that's it. Yeah, uh, again, I'll be running this quadcopter on 4S. I'm not completely sure on which LiPos yet. Probably Tattoo R-Lines, 850 milliamp hour 4S. We'll see if they hold up. And maybe for the amp draw of these propellers and motors, I need me some slightly bigger LiPos. 
1004S? Maybe. You tell me in the comment section below what you think of this setup. I'd be anxious to know what you actually make of this setup, this high KV, 3100 KV on a 5 inch quadcopter with 3 bladed propellers 4S. Yeah, I'm taking a bit of a risk there. Again, the pitch is low, the weight is low, we should be fine, we will see. <laughs> yeah. So that leaves me with, uh, well, the task of building the quadcopter. Right? So in a coming video, I'll be flying it, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Wish me luck. If you have questions, hit me up a comment down below. Or maybe you have tips. Maybe you say, no, no Dutch RC, that's not gonna work. Uh, let me know. I'd be very happy <laughs> to know if this is not going to work. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you for your attention. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.